Hi everybody, Nolan of Black Diamond Services. I'm out at an empty um, house here, small place. So I want to show you guys something. Let's take a look. So this is the first bedroom. Not too bad, right? Not too bad. But the master is pretty worn out around the main traffic areas really rough on both sides of the bed, mainly this side. I'm going into this with the suggestion of replacement because this is so worn down compared to where a piece of furniture was sitting that you can get it clean, or I know I can get it clean, but these traffic areas where the fibers are beat up and, and worn out are gonna look the same. It'll just be cleaner and maybe not looking as dark because you're getting the soils out. And even this tile here, this is a travertine, so a stone, it needs attention. You can tell something was sitting right here because the grout lines are pretty good. And then the rest of it is kind of bad. Lean into the bathroom. Whoever lived here prior did no cleaning whatsoever, it seems. Even this tile is kind of bad. Not so much on the surface. Maybe... This got vacuumed because it's more of a flat tile. But then you come to the kitchen, same tile as the bathroom, back to being kind of a wreck. And it leads all the way in here. So the, the guy's handyman was here and said that there was house cleaners or something coming in. But I'm telling him that this needs more than what house cleaning can do. This needs a high alkaline cleaner and mechanical scrubbing and pressure rinsing out with our truck mount to get this nice and clean. So, yeah, it already looks like appliances were replaced because based on the way the floor looks, there's no way those appliances would look that good. So I wanted to show you guys this because there's many jobs where some people are like, why didn't you just replace the carpet? Like, why would you clean that? And you know, a lot of times it's the landlord or the owner of the property that's selling it or, or buying it, you know, they made that decision. They wanted to hold on to it for now, you know, for who knows what reason, um, there's always a different reason. Maybe they're, you know, selling the property and when you put new carpet into a house that you're selling you don't get any additional value out of it not at least in california you won't because it may not be what somebody wants and they'll come in and just tear it out and put a different flooring in so a lot of times it's not worth it to spend the money and time getting new carpet installed because you won't get any additional value out of the sale of the property so that's a lot of the reasons why that nobody Almost nobody will put new carpet in before they sell the house because there's it's kind of pointless uh, in in at least our area. And now, if it was changed out like this floor, this tile here was changed out, and you know something nice was put in at bare minimum LVP or like say this was hardwood floors that got put in here, sure the value of the house would probably go up because you know most people perceive hardwood floors as very nice, so you'll get some more value out of that or like you know upgrading the kitchen, making it look nicer with, um, let's say even like marble countertops instead of these, the kind of basic granite like this. And you'll probably get more value out of the house, but not, not the floors so much when it comes to carpet. So I know a lot of people have commented over a bunch of different videos of ours and said, why didn't they just replace it? That's gross. Why would you even try to clean that? And it's, you just won't get any extra value out of the sale. You know, you're cleaning it and making it presentable for the sale because they're going to replace it with what they want and you have no idea what the buyer wants. So that change in the home doesn't really matter um, in most cases. So that's why, just to clarify that. But um, yeah, I'm sending pictures of this to the landlord uh, because quite honestly, I would replace it and that's how I feel about a lot of the other jobs that I've done videos of that were pretty bad looking I would replace it but if somebody wants you to clean it and they're okay with potential outcome you know results that you can only guarantee so much we can't 
we can work some magic, but we can't work miracles, you know? Um, I thought this was kind of funny. I randomly made it up the other day, but, um, you know, we don't walk on water. We just clean with it. I thought that was kind of humorous. So, um, you know, if you have the right chemistry and tools, uh, or at least, the, you know, put in the extra time and effort to clean it, you could do a great job. It's just carpet wear is carpet wear. You can't bring it back. You can't make new the old fibers that are beat up right here look brand new when you're done. Will it look better? Of course. But it's never going to look as nice as underneath the bed or up against a corner where no one walks because that those fibers didn't come untwisted. So when they untwist and open up, it's kind of like a flower. So you can call it carpet blooming where the fibers untwist and open up and it, it looks a lot darker even after it's been cleaned because there's a bunch of pits. Whereas the carpet being nice and tight over here, there's not a bunch of pits because it's still all together. And so it doesn't look as dark even after a cleaning. So for me to get this to blend with the center there is near impossible. So hopefully this information helps better understand for those that don't clean and for those that do clean, sometimes you think you can go over this until you're blue in the face and it still looks terrible. And it's just mainly because it's worn out. And if it's beat down this bad, soil is penetrated past the fibers into the backing, the secondary backing, and even all the way to the subfloor. So there's only so much you can do. All right, so they opted to have me clean it. So there you have it. This is why I explain things because I don't want them to going in having uh, unrealistic expectations, but very understanding. Um, they just want this taken care of. I don't know if they're selling it or not, so I can't really speak on that. But here we go. Empty canister. Let's get it going.
All right, for those who want to learn about the carpet cleaning and what I'm doing and what I'm using, so in my Hydroforce sprayer, I am diluting Frog Nasty Pre-Spray. You can see it's a 12 and a half pH, so that's alkaline. It's a high alkaline. It has some citrus in it. It's great for really soiled carpets. This one's over the top, as you saw through the vacuuming and whatnot but I'm adding some Pure 2 odor and stain remover with citrus. So I'm wanting a little extra. Um, I didn't see any stains under UV light, so that's good, but it kind of stinks in there. So I'm adding some of that in there into my pre-spray. And so I basically did three, three scoops, so six ounces of Frog Nasty. And then because this was bad, I did four ounces of the Pure 2 in my Hydroforce and then mixed it up, or I'm gonna mix it up and then fill it the rest of the way with water. So this is a gallon sprayer. I'm running four to one uh, on this. So again, three scoops or six ounces of Frog Nasty, four ounces of pure oat. Okay, so the reason why I went ahead and CRB in the other room first is because this one's so much more soiled. I wanted just a little extra dwell time to get to it before I run the CRB over it. How much of a difference that makes, I don't know necessarily if it will make a huge difference, but just allowing it to dwell a little longer before I run the CRB could definitely make a change, I'm sure. Yeah, I have noticed that in the past. How much of a difference it makes, I'm, I can't say for sure, but anything helps. 